Um, EMG SF says, Hola, doctor. Would you recommend surgery for someone who needs to lose 65 pounds? Um, so uh, this is actually maybe a good jumping point. I've gotten a lot of recent questions about surgery. Uh, who is a good candidate for surgery? Why would we choose surgery? Um, so EMG, I think the question, uh, that's a kind of a, a, a broad question. I think that's hard to answer specifically. Um, does everyone who needs to lose 65 pounds need surgery? No, absolutely not. Many people um, only need some lifestyle advice and programming and can lose 65 pounds. Not everyone who needs to lose 65 pounds should be on medication. Um, I'm someone who fully subscribes to the belief that um, if you can do all of this, if you can manage your weight and all your health risks without medication or surgery, you should do it. I think everyone watches my videos and <laughs> believes that I'm some pill pusher or something. I'm not. I promise you. If you come to my office, it's like you would you would realize that in the conversations we have. It has to be very personalized. I think it depends on what you've already been through. It depends on your health risks, where you currently are in your health. If you are at higher health risk and you have been through many a different attempt in the past, uh, then I think that you're someone we would consider for surgery if you qualify. So I, I think that's where it comes into play. Whether someone should have surgery or not is a very personal question on the side of the individual. And then on the side of pro the provider, we look at what your health risk is. And so surgery is typically reserved for individuals who have not responded to other treatments and who are at higher um, health risk. That's really how, that's why I hate the BMI sort of classification. We use BMI because it's the standard across the world, but I hate BMI because it doesn't tell you about someone's individual risk. I was just having this conversation with a patient today who actually, I had like four or five TikTok patients today, by the way, which was hilarious. <laughs> it's like, it's starting to be a thing now and when patients come in and as, see me on TikTok. But the, I told this person, I said, listen, I know people that are 400, 500 pounds who, who have struggled with their weight, but you wouldn't otherwise know it in terms of their health. They're very functional. They have no other weight related issues. They have good blood pressure, good blood sugar. Um, and so this is where that, that concept of metabolically healthy uh, obesity comes from. Um, I also know people that have a BMI of 27 who have high blood pressure, have sleep apnea, have osteoarthritis, have diabetes. A lot of times it's related to ethnicity. Uh, some ethnicities have more weight-related side weight-related health issues at lower BMI. So I think it really depends on the health, the totality of the health risk, whether or not you should pursue surgery or consider it. Great question. How dangerous is sleeve? I wrote a little bit about this in I think my first bariatric video. So if you wanna go back and look at that, um, it is incredibly safe compared to what it used to be. The I think the one year mortality rate is less than 0.25%, less than a quarter of a percent, which is as safe as any abdominal surgery that we have today. It's as safe as a gallbladder removal, it's as safe as a pen, an appendix removal. So um, it, in terms of abdominal surgeries, the the advancement in the scientific approach to to uh, sleeve is is has gotten to the point where it's about as safe as it's ever going to be. You know, maybe one day when robots automate surgery, it'll be even safer. How do you know if you need a revision? Or on, are there any side effects that clues that you do if you do? Um, whether you need a surgical revision, um, that's a great question. I think it really depends on where you are in terms of your in terms of your post-surgical um, course and how much weight you lost and how much weight you potentially regained, which is why you're probably considering revision. Usually most patients lose the majority of their weight within the first year after bariatric surgery. So um, the majority of weight's lost, they call it the honeymoon phase. The majority of weight is lost within that first year or two if they're gonna have some amount of weight regain, which is not unusual to have even a small amount because um, usually they, they kind of settle out, they lose, they hit a, a, you know, sort of a peak of the total weight loss, and then they have some small amount of weight regain. But the net total weight loss is significant for most bariatric surgical patients. Um, but for some individuals, for whatever reason, are having some weight regain and are considering either a revision or a conversion from a sleeve to like bypass, that just depends. Depends how far out you are, depends on are you continuing to have health risks, 
Have you dramatically improved your health with the initial surgery? What are the risks of additional surgery? It's not an easy question, Patty. And I would say I would talk to your bariatric surgeon if that's something you think that should be considered for you. BMI 37 bonus, every obesity comorbidity you can name, ruin Y or duodenal switch? That's a good question. Um, I don't have as much experience with duodenal switch. In theory, based on the observational data we have, duodenal switch leads to more weight loss, primarily because you don't absorb nutrients. So it's like, even if you eat food, you have a mechanical restriction because a duodenal switch is a bypass in some extent. It's actually a more sort of aggressive bypass. You bypass more of the bowel and um, you also have a greater amount of malabsorption. So uh, micronutrient deficiencies are even bigger concern. You have to be very dig- diligent and um, vigilant both uh, with your nutrient supplementation for the rest of your life. Um, so that's a consideration. Um, can it lead to more weight loss than bypass? That's what it looks like uh, when you look at the data, but duodenal switch is a pretty new procedure. So we still don't have as much data as we have on the bypass, which has been done for several decades now has a lot of really good safety data and efficacy. I would talk to your surgeon. They're gonna be more of an expert in, in the nuances of those individual surgeries than me. Can I have a sleeve after I've had a Y and R? A Ruin Y, I'm assuming you're referring to? Usually a sleeve is the first, and a Ruin Y would be considered a more advanced surgery. So if you're wanting to do step one, step one would be a sleeve. For some people, sleeve can then be lead to ruin Y, but not the reverse. Um, by the very definition of a bypass, you have a sleeve done. So a, a, a ruin Y gastric bypass is the combination of both a gastric sleeve and then a, a gastric bypass. So you get, you get a, um, a, a stomach pouch made that is similar to the sleeve gastrectomy when you have a ruin Y. So it's like having basically two procedures. Um, so that's why many people will do the sleeve first if they still want to lose more weight after that because they didn't kind of reach their health goals. They can have a conversion to a ruin Y afterwards. That's that's a, We're seeing a lot more of that. Sleeve is the first option. Ruin Y is a, hopefully you'll never need it, but as a potential second option. Once you have ruin Y, if you don't have an adequate result, um, you're limited in what else you can do just because the the surgery that's occurred and the anatomy changes are, are harder to manage at that point. How long does recovery take? Um, it depends, but you, you don't have to stay in the hospital usually more than a day or two. So recovery is per, pretty quick when you talk about being in the hospital. After that, it can be a few weeks while your diet's adjusting. So you'll still be on a liquid diet for some time. Um, I've had thigh pass. Could I still take weight loss? Yes, absolutely. You can take weight loss medication at any point in time before or after surgery, so long as it is, um, you still qualify for it, which is um, technically anyone with a BMI greater than 27 um, is really what what most people consider as sort of the threshold. Um, After gastric bypass 18 years ago, put on 40 pounds, please help. (sighs) Yeah, um, I think this is a really good example to highlight guys that surgery is not a cure-all for obesity. It is, a, it is the most effective treatment we have to date, but it doesn't cure. And so uh, it is a disease you have to live with for the rest of your life. And you have to deal with the rest of your life, uh, much like any disease, chronic disease for that matter. Um, and so it is important, and this is getting back to my original point, it is important that you are involved in a supportive network, either via a provider a group of other individuals who have similar issues that you know you guys can offer each other support and accountability or family. Um, and the more that you can stay supported by different networks, I think even better. So I, I think that's super key in terms of weight loss maintenance and keeping weight off is having that support and accountability um, because you're gonna have good days and bad days. And it's typically those bad days, weeks, months, years potentially, that determine and um, for many people, whether or not they have weight regain, um, because once again, you have to find ways to deal with the good and the bad of life. And, um, oftentimes human nature is such that we will use food to deal with stressful situations, emotional, we may 
take on bad habits as a way, as a vice for escapism. Um, it could be in the form of alcohol, other drugs, any number of things. And so being able to manage all of those things and having a supportive network that can help you manage those things is critical. So, um, but for some people, regardless of doing all that, their biology is such that they still struggle. I know of a number of people that have done everything right and they've still struggled with their weight. And that's why, you know, I just see example day after day of people where you're just like, yep, not a willpower issue, not a willpower issue. They're not lazy. They've worked really hard and, um, and they still struggle. I mean, I, guys, I have, I have CEOs of Fortune 500 companies that are patients of mine. Some of the most successful people in the United States that see me and very motivated, type A personalities, all of them very driven and for the life of them could never manage their weight correctly. It's not an issue of willpower. It's not an issue of competence. It's none of that. That's, that's just complete BS that is perpetuated, unfortunately, by people that don't know any better that are ignorant. So I would say it is, it is, it is very complicated, um, but having a good supportive network is helpful.